Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, welcome to Siempre Palante. Welcome, mi gente, to Siempre Palante, Always Forward, a podcast that is culture-driven, focused on familia, overcoming adversity, and legacy. I'm your host, Hirado Luis Alvarez. Gracias for listening. In this episode, we learn about how our guests took the pain of their daughter transitioning to heaven as a result of colon cancer. They channeled their grief into a journey of helping others by honoring her legacy. I'm grateful to introduce the founders of M2 Life Coaching for Discovery, Gwen and Doug Bryant. Share with the listener a little bit about the foundation, the movement. Tiffany is a twin. We have another daughter, Tamara, our son, Doug Jr. Tiffany was just a loving, kind, free-spirited person who just loved to laugh, just enjoyed life in itself. The movement, the legacy that she has left is a legacy of awareness. And that awareness is colorectal cancer. There are two parts to that. We say colon and rectal, but Tiffany had colon cancer. She was diagnosed at age 32 out of nowhere. She was healthy. Her and her husband would go to the gym. They would work Mm -hmm. out. It just hit us like a truck just ran into us and just knocked us off our feet, the whole family, one week before her 33rd birthday. And it felt like someone had taken my heart and just pulled my heart out because you normally hear about colon cancer in older people. At least we didn't hear before we found out that Tiffany had colon cancer. We didn't hear about it. And you don't hear a lot about colorectal cancer. That's what our movement is about. It's about getting the awareness out there, letting people know that this is serious. In the African-American community, we are 20% higher risk and 40% more likely to die. And a lot of us don't even know it. I didn't know it. Doug didn't know. Our family didn't know that until Tiffany was diagnosed with colorectal cancer. It is of the utmost to get your colonoscopies done. I was reading by the year 2030. The ages 20 to 49 will be diagnosed with colorectal cancer. And it's already happening. It's sad. We do this because we don't want other families to go through what we have experienced. Colorectal cancer, it is preventable, it's treatable, and it's beatable if you catch it in time. The preventative task force, they're the ones who set the guidelines for the age. But we're fighting and we continue to fight. The age needs to be even lower than 45. Tiffany didn't make it to 45 to get screened. She didn't have a chance. And we hear about Chadwick Bozeman. He was 43. So that's one of our fights is to get this lower because so many people are being diagnosed with this. I can go back to when she was first diagnosed. She was so gracious. And with her being a registered nurse, knowing a lot about the field, she wanted to share her story. And that's one of the reasons why we are here and we can sit here and we can share her story because that's what she wanted to do. Even in the midst of everything she was going through, she said, I got to help somebody. I want to help somebody. She started sharing her story on Facebook. She did Facebook Lives. She did YouTube channels. And she just started journaling her journey. 
In December of 2018, Tiffany went in for surgery. They removed a tumor from her colon. And when they removed the tumor, they found out that it had metastasized to her liver. So she had to recuperate from the surgery. And in January 2019, she started chemotherapy to help with the tumors that were in her liver. And she started out chemo on this pump called the FU pump. She would go in for treatment for a couple of hours, and then she would come home with the pump, which was continuously giving her the treatment for about two to three days. And then she would go back in and she would take the pump in. Well, that started working for a few months. We thought it was. We thought everything was looking good. The tumors were shrinking. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Everything is going to be all right. Everything is working. A few months went in. She started having issues with the pump and they did whatever they could. So then they had to change the type of chemotherapy that she was on. This was the second treatment. She had to take so many pills a day. That wasn't working. They did the third treatment. All during this time, this young lady had this positive attitude. Gracious. I'm still trusting God in all of this. Mom, dad, her husband, there by his side, her sister, her brother, family. I'm still trusting God. And then that treatment didn't work. So we're like, what in the world is going on? Why is nothing working for her? Why? And at the time, I didn't know. My husband didn't know. But later... After Tiffany had passed, I did my own research and I started researching and I found out that she had this gene, this mutated gene. It's called the CRAS gene and it increases tumors and it's more aggressive. That's why nothing was working for her because of that particular gene. So in the midst of all of that, we found out that The cancer had also spread to her lungs. It had spread to her gallbladder as well. She actually went in for surgery to have the gallbladder removed and Mm -hmm. they couldn't remove the gallbladder. And they (laughs) said that if they would have removed the gallbladder, she wouldn't have lasted. It would have spread (laughs) even quicker. So that was another devastating (laughs) blow. So, like I said, during all this time, her spirit was just so high and she just trusts God. And I thank God for what he allowed Doug and I to instill into our children, the love of God, the faith, the walk with God, the relationship with God. And I think that's what really kept her going to how she found out. She was pregnant with her third child and she started having rectal bleeding. We went to the ER with her one night and they told her that it was just hemorrhoids. Tiffany being on nerves, she said, no, she knew that it was something else. Now looking back, we say, could they have done anything different? But with her being pregnant, there was not much they could do. So she had to wait until she had the baby to get the colonoscopy. And then when she did find out, she was already at stage four, which was the highest stage that you can actually get. Even in the midst of all her troubles, everything that she experienced with the treatments, how it made her feel, the weakness, the sores. I mean, everything that she went through, she still had a positive spirit. She didn't want anybody coming around her with sad stories (laughs) because her faith was in God. Yeah. So that's what makes her so much stronger. Just to see your child be this earmark for faith. See, your child shows that mom and dad, everything that you poured into me, now let me show you what God has done for me. 
And to know that seeing her come into the world and being there in the delivery room when she and her sister were born in Andrews Air Force Base, and then seeing her transition into life, and then seeing her 32 years later transition out of this world into eternal life. So we got to see that. We got to feel that. But I will tell you this, that her going to be with the Lord was so gracious that even the hospice nurses, that they were amazed that when they came in the room, they would say, is she okay? She looked so gracious. She didn't fight. She She didn't cry. I mean, she cried, but she didn't kick, scream. It was uncanny. It was like, my God, to see this. She kept us going. Yeah. And that's the thing that really helped us to where we can sit here and talk to you is to remember her strength. You know, when you see someone's strength and then it's your own child, it's amazing. And so being able to be there for her, seeing her go through her treatments. They even tried to go to Atlanta to the Cancer Treatment Centers of America. But then that's when she received more devastating news. It looked like every place she tried, nothing worked. And that crash gene has a lot to do with it. But it's like God was saying, I'm setting this up for my glory. And so what we kept saying is like, she's either preparing for a miracle or a mansion. And so the miracle would have been her healing, her coming out of this cancer and telling her story. But her mansion was that she would pass on and be with the Lord, knowing that in everything that Tiffany has brought into this world, it's a mandated legacy that we couldn't let it pass. We couldn't let it go away. We couldn't just say, we'll mend, we'll be all right. It's like, no, because there are too many other people out here who need to know. And Tiffany, through her death, has blessed and helped many others go get colonoscopies. We didn't realize so many people that she had touched. And still to this day, we get messages, oh, I had my colonoscopy because of Tiffany. I even had two young ladies, we go to the same doctor and they text me one day and just told me, oh, I scheduled my colonoscopy. So anytime anybody schedules something, they'll text either her sister or my husband or somebody, they'll just let us know, I got my colonoscopy scheduled. (laughs) And another thing I wanted to say that's important is knowing your family history. Even though we knew our family history, we knew there was no colorectal cancer in our family, not on his side, not on my side, but it is vitally important that when you go to your primary care doctor, tell them everything, tell them your family history. If you don't know your family history, go to mom, go to dad, go to grandma, go to somebody. That's where it starts with the colon cancer as well, genetic testing. Get genetic testing done as well. That's important. But that family history is one of the most important things that you can give information to your primary care. It's one thing that Gwen and I really push is that you have to be your own health advocate. People are into fitness, people are eating this, running that, they're doing that. But when it comes to your doctor, that needs to be like one of your best relationships. You should be able to talk to your doctor about anything. Doc, I'm not feeling this way. I'm feeling bad. Whatever it is, because if you're not your own advocate, something could be overlooked that really should be looked into. Talk to your doctor because that's one of the things that Tiffany pushed was she's a registered nurse. She knew her body. So when they told her that, no, those are hemorrhoids. He said, no, that's not hemorrhoids. That's something else, and I want to know. So because of that, move right there. So we push the people become their own advocate when it comes to their health. Get screened. Now, see, we know that they've set the age marker at 45 and all of that. But Gwen said earlier, our fight 
is that people understand that even though they say 45, there are other ways that they're working on that you can get screened, that you can get verification. You know, they're working on something by pulling blood. They have the cola guard. And we know insurance may be an issue. We know. But here's the thing. Fight for what you need to get done. If you don't fight for what you need, no insurance company is going to come out and tell you, well, we can't cover that. Let them tell you no. That's our philosophy. Let someone else tell you no. Don't tell yourself no. So when they need to be screened, when they need to get a fecal swipe or whatever it is that's necessary, it needs to be known. And especially in the African-American, Black, Brown community, it really needs to be pushed because we're the ones that's hitting the hardest. We're the ones that are dying. That's why it is so imperative. And just to know that our daughter, soon as she got the opportunity, she jumped on YouTube. She jumped on Facebook Live. She said, let me make a difference. And then the next thing you know, doors started opening after her loss for my wife, who is the main researcher. She's taking this on 100%. She's bringing it back to us. She's telling me, Doug, the KRAS gene. I'm like, who? And so she's doing the research, but here's what solidifies it. She's had a few opportunities. God has blessed doors to open up for her to talk to different associations, Mm -hmm. the Florida Black Nurses Association. She's talked to Pfizer, did one today. As a matter of fact, she spoke with MD Anderson, Anderson, Cancer Cancer Center. The things that she was laying out to them, they're sitting there like, where did she get that from? the knowledge that she's coming with. And this is the same thing of a woman that says, I need to be my own advocate and I need to advocate this for change. So that's why it's important that we, Gwen and I, our son, our daughter, Tamara, her sister, that we continue to push this. We will continue to do this. This is what we do now. It's our legacy. It's Tiffany's legacy, but it's for us to to solidify Mm -hmm. the foundation that she laid out. Yeah. And another reason why we continue to do this, Tiffany left three beautiful children. Beautiful. Her husband is now the sole caretaker for the children. Jonathan, who's age eight, Judah is six, and Janessa is now three years old. So we still fight for them because at an early age, they're going to have to get tested even earlier. Yeah. So now that we know this, now that we know that they need genetic testing, we don't know if she passed the gene on to them. We call them our G babies. (laughs) (laughs) So now we're concerned about our G babies. That's another reason why we won't stop until God close our eyes. We're not going to stop. Because it needs to be known. It has to be known because so many people are dying from it. And it's a silent killer. It sneaks up on you. You can have these symptoms of constipation. You can have diarrhea. You can have stomach pain. And you just think, oh, I'll be okay. Let me just take this. But that's not always the case. That is not always the case. You need to get checked. And now, a word from our host, Hidalgo Luis. Did you know, sabias que... Gwen and Doug are certified life coaches who specialize in helping others focusing on spiritual gifts, personality assessment, and the five love languages. One specific coaching area titled Grief is dedicated to their daughter Tiffany who transitioned to heaven on March 29, 2020 at age 34 from colon cancer. Their mission is to continue to empower and motivate others through self-identification, awareness, and the power of application. Gwen and Doug believe It is their earnest desire to assist others who may need a little boost to keep things going by reclaiming happiness while facing grief. For more information, go to m2lifecoachingfordiscovery.com. Ya tu sabe, now back to the show. This is truly amazing. And you talked about the family history. I don't feel as people, we do enough. It gets lost with time. We don't do family trees as much as we used to. When you have a family tree, along the family tree, you need to put down what they died of. Okay, so we need to get checked for X. You have that thing posted, your family tree, having that knowledge, then that way it's stuff that you can pass on 
through the family. So we'll know you were born here, you died here, you died up. Uh, right. The day she did the conversation with Pfizer, the doctors were like sitting there and it's like curious as to how did she know this? And then at the end of the conversation, they commended her on doing excellent research. Now, these were top researchers at Pfizer, and God blessed her graciously, anointed her afresh in that moment to whatever she said. These doctors are now sitting there trying to say, okay, what do we do? Because then they start bringing out some things that they're doing, that they're starting to do. So what we want to make sure is that in the communities, you know how a politician can always go to a church when it's voting time and vote for me and, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's the last time you see them. But that's not what we're trying to do. It's not just churches. It's anything community related that we can say something, email, whatever, create a video and say, hey, listen, just informing people how crucial this is. Years ago, this wasn't a thought. But now that it is, it's like, wait a minute, am I walking around with a crash gene? Do I have a PAL-B gene in me? Do I have colorectal cancer? Do I have any cancer? If we can help get this word out, it may seem like it's smoke signals now, but we look forward to it becoming mainstream, that it become like the cell phone has become, you know, international. I could talk to somebody in India on my cell phone. That's how far wide this message of awareness needs to get out. Because at the end of the day, when you know to do better, you will do better. Share with us a little bit about both your upbringings and some of those key components because it connects the dots about purpose, legacy, and also how things come full circle. Well, for me, honestly, I come from a divorced family. My upbringing was at an early age, my parents divorced. I'm the youngest of four children. My brother passed away in 2000. So it's just me and my two sisters, Darlene and Joy. My sister, Darlene, told me a story. She said, Doug, no matter whatever happened, you were covered. I never understood that. She said that you were not sheltered, but you were covered, that you never got into any trouble. You did what you were supposed to do. Now, you got them weapons like you were supposed to get them. Now, if you did something wrong, and I did, I did, well, you know, we all do. But nonetheless, my upbringing taught me the value of family because I said that one day I want to get married. I want to have kids, but I don't want to leave my wife. I want to see how this thing stays. So I've seen the whole generation of men in my family, divorce, 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 divorce. I'm like, no, it can't happen. They can't let that happen. Enemy wants that. So after seeing my stepdad, he was raised on survival and my dad was raised on opposite of that. I had the best of both worlds. Someone that was raised in the streets, literally, and someone that was raised by two parents, basically. But they both gave value of family. Sounds strange, but it gave value of family. So to be successful in it, God dropped in my heart, gave me the opportunity And that's when they met her, because it's a scripture in Ecclesiastes 9, and I believe it's around 7, 8, or 9, it talks about where the wife is a reward. And so I was given Gwen, first of all, as a girlfriend, she was there when I'm skinny as a rail. Dude, when I tell you, I was like, "Mm mm-mm, hard to get a date in high school. (laughs) Please understand. But yet still, she said, I see something in him. So we dated, right? And then we got together. Then her family values, because now I get to see what a whole family looks like. Her mom and dad were together. He passed away in 1995. Great man. But I learned from him in his silence how to treat 
his daughter, but how he treated his wife and how he treated his kids. My grandmother, great woman, man, she was amazing. So I learned a lot from my grandmother, value of family. So family has always been that foundational piece for me to say one day when I have one, here are the values, build on the foundation of what you've seen through divorce, through the best of both worlds, through knowing what you desire in life is to have someone that will always love you for you, be there for you no matter what, thick and thin. And then also at the end of the day, that she's willing to have your children. And then once she has your children, is that she knows that you'll be there to take care of those children from the beginning to the end. So just being there, and then Gwen has taught me by watching her and her family interact. She's given me the other side of family, of the relationships to have with your siblings, even the more. And being that she's the youngest in her family. So two babies getting together, right? You know, I'm the youngest, she's the youngest. But at the end of the day, just knowing that watching Gwen do what she does, quiet, introverted Gwen, but yet still now has become this powerhouse speaker, anointed. And I think as a man, sometimes we miss the opportunity of learning from our wives. If you're married, because they can teach us too. So I've learned all of these little pieces of value from family, even though broken, but you select what you need to make it. You can either not let it go, or you can say, I'm going to try that right there. Oh, that works. So let me add another piece. And it begins to build. For me, it's just knowing the value of family, knowing that through thick and thin, and even through being knuckleheaded, my family is what matters the most. And that God came into my life early and began to get me on the right path and then getting on that right path. Now God has blessed me with a great family, which now builds a foundation for our children. So they value family. They value God. They value their relationship with one another. So they got that from watching us. And they continue to tell us that, sometimes even in jokes, but they tell us what they learn from us as their parents. I'm number 11. I'm the 11 and the last child, thank God. <laughs> My mom is still living. She's 97. Yeah. And I take care of her, Daisy Denmark. My brothers and sisters say I was spoiled because I got everything I wanted. I never got spankings except for this one time. <laughs> My mom wouldn't let me go to the store. So me being me, what I would do when I get angry, I go to every door in the house and just slam it. I got to this last door and I was just about to slam it. <laughs> I saw a hand come around and, and I never slammed the door again in my life. I don't even close the doors hard anymore. I just like... She does. <laughs> she but does. from my mom and my dad, because they were always... It's funny you say that because my brother was teasing us the other day. He said, every time I see you and Doug, y'all are together. You remind me of mom and dad because they were always together, no matter what, wherever they went. But the values that I have learned from my parents is, I would say family, because they were all about family. Till this day, my mom, 97, don't say nothing about one of her children. She don't go for that. And I learned the value of giving. And that's one of my gifts. I learned that from my mom because my mom, she is a giver at heart. If you were a boyfriend in the family, she would get you a Christmas gift. Everybody got Christmas gifts. And I learned that from her, the value of giving. Family, love, and giving. Being there for one another in times of need, being able to be there 
for a person. That was one of the things that my mother and father instilled in us too. You may be angry with that person or whatever, but be there to support them, be there to pray for them or be there to, you know, whatever their needs are just to be there. On my part, it's actually something my stepfather stated and I carry it to this day. And it's the wording that says, understanding beats the world. Seeing how my stepdad grew up, being in the neighborhood of seeing, meeting his mom, she was my grandma. She was a giving woman as well. But just seeing on the east side of Jacksonville, life was so simple back then, really. But my stepfather would always say, Douglas, understand and beach the world. And I didn't understand that until I got older, until I started understanding. And then when you understand and you step back, that's how you beat the world at its game. You step back and you understand that that's not supposed to be like that. You understand I control my own thoughts process and what I can, what I am given. I understand I make a difference in Gwen's life. I make a difference in Doug Jr. or Tamara or Tiffany or my grandkids or my family, even at my job, making a difference. Why? understanding beats the world. How can people help you drive this message? What are some ways that people can help? Because it takes a village. I love that saying. It's not just the both of you. How can you continue to do this? Back in 2016, God allowed Gwen and I to create a ministry. And originally it started out for couples, but then we expanded it out and simply said it's for everyone because we actually have within the ministry itself is where we desire to go around talking, not just to couples, but to anyone, number one, about their spiritual gifts, about their purpose, about their passions, about how all of these matter in their life so that they can live out the life that Christ has for them, that God has instilled for them. Because one of the biggest things going around today, people want to know their purpose. As a Christian, as one who seeks to walk with Christ, you need to know about your spiritual gifts. So those are things that Gwen and I, we are taking that portion of our ministry and engulfing that with Tiffany's legacy. By Tiffany's story being that she knew her gifts. Tiffany was compassionate. Tiffany was a giver. Tiffany was a helper. Tiffany had these gifts. She used her gifts until the very end. Tiffany worked until January of the year of her death. Tiffany worked all the way through pain, going through chemo. She would push it. So we're trying to push that. Being life coaches, we're trying to get folks to realize that you have so much in you, but let us help you develop that. We want to reach them through that. We want to reach them if they want to reach out to us through going on Facebook or hitting us up on LinkedIn. That's one of the places where we are now. Gwen's on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn. Our ministry's on LinkedIn. So we're trying to get out there. And you're right. We do want to get with other people, other couples, singles, doesn't matter, so that we can create this army. We want volunteers. We want people that will step up and say, hey, we're building up relationship with our church that we're part of a ministry that is built off of those who have survived or know of or who want to help out with cancer. So we're trying to find every medium, every way possible that we can actually reach the nation, reach everywhere as far as we can go about this thing. So I would say about the ministry that we have, that things that Gwen does, by reaching out or actually by being blessed with the podcast such as yourself or being blessed with the moments, speaking with researchers and doctors and nurses in those ways. If someone knows of any other way, reach out to us. Let us know because we want to get this out there. Doug mentioned our website, Into Life Coaching for Discovery. Also, we have a page dedicated to Tiffany. On grief, we want to help 
those who may be grieving get through it. We're getting through it. We'll never get over it, but we'll be able to still maneuver through life. To sit here and talk to you, still be able to laugh, to smile. There's still life after death. And we know that Tiffany would want us to move on. And we want to be able to help those others who may be grieving but are stuck on that one thing. Why did this happen to me? And I just want to share this scripture with you that God gave me one night that I was up and God, you got to give me something. And I'm crying and I'm just yelling out, screaming out to God. And just as I got ready to go back to bed, I was gripping my Bible just as I was getting ready to close it. It never hit me like it hit me that night. It's Isaiah 57, 1 and 2. And I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. It says, good people pass away. The godly often die before their time. But no one seems to care or wonder why. No one seems to understand that God is protecting them from the evil to come. For those who follow godly paths will rest in peace when they die. And that gave me a sense of comfort, a sense of peace. Like God was saying, this is why. And I shared it with my husband. I shared it with my family. And this is one of the other things that keeps Doug and I going yeah. as parents. Yeah. Like he said, he was either going to heal her on this side or the other side. But God chose the other side. Mm-hmm. Even though we prayed, we fasted, mm-hmm. we did everything. But it was God's choice to take her home. And he gave us the scripture to comfort us. Gracias, Gwen and Doug, for sharing your story. Your unwavering faith to ensure the legacy of Tiffany lives on by helping others in what you do and provides hope that people need today. We are getting close to the end of season one, mi gente, and it's more important than ever for you to subscribe, rate five stars, like, and review the show. You can listen via Anchor.fm, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Check the show description for more info on where you can find Gwen and Doug via social media. Next week, our season one finale features Dr. Colleen Georges, a life coach and best-selling author who's blazing her own trail. Tune in and tell a friend. Hasta la próxima. Pa'lante.